let's make another pivot table sales year to year so to do that we either needed a column that will give us the year so we can refer to it or we can make a query function for that so I guess I'll just do the column here so change my select statement and I'm going to select select A B C D E F G and age those are the columns I'm going to need now if you're not going to use cost of goods you can skip that but you should do this before you start building your dashboard initially if you're gonna skip any columns so I'm gonna add another column and I want this column to be based on that column a which is the date but I only want to get the year out of it so I'll do year a hit enter and you can see how we're extracted the year out of it in a column. So now we can use that in our pivot if necessary. I'll go ahead and use that in, in a pivot table. So data pivot table. So values is going to be sales. And then row label is going to be year rename some things here I guess oops year and this would be sales so that's our pivot table I'm gonna highlight that copy go to my dashboard paste it right there or wherever it's supposed to show up then go back and delete this pivot table and you get the idea basically you keep just creating new charts creating new reports whatever it needs to be and you copy and paste them here and if you don't need it over there you just get rid of it and that's going to be the logic of all the different modules we're going to bring on our dashboard the next step for us is to give user some functionality. So we want to be able to have this, but we want to be able to filter this report. So we want the user to enter the start date if necessary for the report and the end date. And we want all of this information on this tab to update. We will also want to give them option to filter by region, which is this column over here. So we'll just go ahead and create that. So I'm going to just copy this, paste it here. This is going to be a region. Now over here, we had that data validation rule. Checking if it's date, we don't want to do that. So we're going to remove validation. We're going to do different data validation here. Create a data validation rule. And we do list from a range now that is from the other tab move this so I don't need to start from the top I need to start from the region and scroll down so I have to click on this to be able to do that so click select hit reject input otherwise Hit save. Let's get back to here. So our drop down now has those unique options. Though the column doesn't have unique options, it will figure it out. It will just show unique options out of it. So that's the region. So we want the user to be able to come here and, for example, choose Midwestern. And we want all of these numbers to update based on that and give us the new total. We also may need the user to just leave blank. We could also create something like with all here so it shows all. If we want to be fancy, we want to create another option here that says all instead of, you know, having them just click here and delete because they may not be able to figure that out. So if we want to do that, we'll have to do some additional steps, which means that I'm going to go under data validation and remove this validation and I'm going to create some helper sheet I'm going to do 
data validation list. And now that I have this, I'll go to the second cell over here and do equals unique. That's the function I'm going to use. I'll go to my temp data set and go from here. I'm not including the region. Shift down and I don't want the end to be there. So close here, close there. That gives me this, right? Unique list. The first item I'm going to enter is all. I'm just going to type it in. The rest is going to be the rest. So that's going to be my data validation list that I'm going to use. So in my dashboard now, here, I'm going to go data, data validation, and list from a range. Click, go back to my tab. And so I'm going to go from here and scroll down so that if people are entering more, we're getting those anyways. I'm going to reject input if it's not one of those options. Hit save. And now we should have a new data validation box. And that should be in our dashboard. So click here, all Midwestern or Eastern, and so on. And you can have all as a default option there. So data validation list, I can also hide that if I don't want that on the way. So there we go. That's our data validation. So it's going to have this options and we'll have the person to choose one and it will give them our filtered reports. Now, how are we going to get those filtered reports? And that's where we start modifying the query on this tab. So originally we made this query to just get everything from the other tab. So to filter our results, we're going to actually filter this query to get the results we need in this tab so that the dashboard will automatically just grab those results and update. So to do that, we need to dynamically create the string of queries. So for now, I'm just going to copy the string itself in quotes, escape. I'm not changing it here. Go back here and just right click and paste values only. So I have it here. I'm going to need this if I want to get everything. So when this is all, this has to be this. But if somebody selects, let's say Midwestern, how is this string going to be different? So it needs to be this, but then it needs to have a where close and it has to say where the region column, whichever one it was, let's assume it's column B equals two, and it's going to select it equals two. Midwestern. Something like that. Let's double check. Was it column B? No, it was actually column C. So we want to make sure we're column C. And by the way, if these are not in the same exact order, you should be checking the transactions tab for the column. So the column C going back. So that's what our query need to say if we want to filter this to Midwestern. So let's just test it out and make sure it works. So I'm going to copy it, go back here. And in here, I'm going to just switch it up to this. And now that should filter our data and see everything should be filtered out based on that. Now we have a little problem here in our chart. This should not show up here because this is our grand total. That's a little issue we'll need to fix. Uh, we also have another problem here is that we are selecting blanks in our years, which we didn't filter out apparently. So that's all fixable solutions. Same problem here. We need to make sure grand totals aren't a part of our calculation. But other than that, we're doing fine. So let's fix this. So there are this, there's this grand total that it looks at it as a, a state that should not be there. And there is also this problem with a zero here. So let's start with this problem. I'm going to click on this, scroll down and other filters. I'm going to do year and date. This, uh, this is something we've done before. I'm going to remove blanks out of it. Here we go. Now the next thing is fixing this issue. So, what's happening is I have those sheets hidden. So let me actually bring them back view hidden sheets and 
this one. So it's referring to this range of values and it includes grand total as one of the values in those. So we don't want grand totals in this pivot to show up. And what we will do, we'll just click here and uncheck show totals and that should remove grand totals. And I'm gonna hide that. And that should take care of this problem over here. Well, that was not the right one, was it? That was the wrap one. But we had to take care of that anyways. So we need also this one. So view. Again, uh, I'm going to go under hidden sheets. And this one is by state. Click on this and make sure we remove the totals out of that too. Go back. Now you will see when I filter it to Midwestern using this particular text, it's now showing just our Midwestern sales on the map and pretty much everywhere else. Great. So this works. The problem is that I just manually went and changed this. We need it to happen as the user goes here and picks different selections. It should really just pick that particular, you know, result out of that. As I did this, I've realized we should also probably change the way we are doing this data validation. And the reason this is happening, if I just do our hidden sheets and bring our validation list, when I did this unique, I'm doing that unique from that temp data set. And if we filter that, it doesn't have those anymore. So it doesn't have those extra values. Now this is actually interesting on its own. You may have to go back and hit all and then come back and choose whichever one when you want, which should work. But later on, I'll change it. So right now I'll leave this to show how this is going to work if we leave it like this. And then I'll show you the alternative way to do this. So I'm going to do a hide. For us, the problem is this. We need this text to be dynamically generated based on what's selected in here. To do that, we need to make some if statements. So the first if statement we're going to check if the selection here is all, because if it's all, there should not be any statements over there that create that string, right? So we'll do equals if, and we'll check if this right here equals all, then we want an empty string as outcome, nothing comma. Otherwise, I'm going to say it should say C equals to, so I'm not using the where part. And later on, I'll show you why, because we have multiple criteria here. We also want to do dates. I'm going to say C equals to, and basically I'm building this string that says Midwestern or whatever that's supposed to be. So I'm going to say C equals to, so that so it's an apostrophe and it's supposed to say mid west turn and apostrophe again and quote again and close. So right now it says all, which is basically nothing. I'm going to go back and modify our query to get back to our full result set because we already know what we need to do. So we have all the options here once it's generated. There we are. So this right now says nothing. If I switch to Midwestern, it says Midwestern. If I switch to Northeastern, it still says Midwestern because what we said is that if it's all do nothing, otherwise do Midwestern. So otherwise what we're going to do instead of doing Midwestern, I'm going to concatenate the text from here. I'll do double quotes some spaces because I want to split that part. So I want that apostrophes, but I want my text in the middle. So I'll do and operator, then this, which is a two, and then another end. That's Northeastern. If I switch to Midwestern, that's Midwestern. If I do to all, it's nothing. Okay. So let me switch to Northeastern. So that's one thing. So we're able to get this if statement that was going to generate C equals this in the cell. 
So the next thing we'll need to do, we also want to be able to filter this by the date that the user enters. 